What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 21. This is the show where we talk about some of the coolest abandoned places in the world. If you've been with the channel for a while or that you've seen our entire Abandoned series, you may remember that we did a video on Disney's Discovery Island. Since that video was actually the first video in the series, and the fact that it was made in 2014, uh, I thought we should redo the whole video just because I think the topic is so interesting and cool, I think it deserves a lot more than we actually gave it. So let's take a look at the abandoned Disney's Discovery Island. So this place has been a legend about Disney for years, and honestly, this place is kind of amazing when you really think about it. So if you've never heard of this, basically Disney's Discovery Island was a zoological attraction on a natural forming island in Walt Disney World, Florida. Also, I think we should clear something up first. Disney's Discovery Island and Disney's River Country are two very different things. Now to be fair, they are in very close proximity to each other, like 600 feet close, but they are two very different things. Alright, now that we cleared that up, let's get on with it. So this island actually does have quite the history dating back as far as the early 1900s. In its early days, the island itself had the name Raz Island from the family that lived and farmed on the land. This was until 1937 when the island was purchased and renamed to Idle Bay Isle by its owner who lived there with his wife and pet crane. While about 20 years passed, after the island's owner fell ill, the property was once again sold to a businessman who used the island as a hunting retreat and now called it Riles Island. Now by the time the mid-60s came along, Walt Disney himself began dreaming of Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, and Walt Disney was adamant on making this dream come true. So Walt Disney Productions began buying massive amounts of land in Central Florida, and part of this land included Bay Lake with Riles Island in the middle. In Walt Disney's concepts for the Florida project, Bay Lake can be seen just off to the east of where the parks and hotels were to be placed. And with this, Riles Island was actually still there. However, in December of 1966, Walt Disney passed away, as did the main concept for the Florida project. So as the early 70s approached, and with Walt's brother Roy at the helm of the company, Walt Disney World was in full development. Obviously, the Epcot dream that Walt Disney actually had never happened, but when Roy took over as CEO, the company redesigned the whole Florida project idea into just a theme park now. So on October 1st, 1971, the entire resort opened to the public. Now interestingly, when Walt Disney World was in its development, the island was actually to be developed in its first phase of Walt Disney World. All official master plans and models showed that the island was to be some sort of pirate theme, and upon the opening of Walt Disney World, the island was named Blackbeard's Island. With Disney encountering financial and attendance problems in 73, they needed something to boost attendance. So Disney continued with their plans for a pirate-themed animal observation island in Bay Lake. The island was expanded with over 55,000 cubic yards of dirt and changed the name to the Treasure Island. The island officially opened to the public on April 8th, 1974. Treasure Island had the theme of obviously pirates and had elements of the 50s film of the same name. The island was given a variety of exotic birds and flowers along with winding paths and small waterways. A pirate ship was added on the southern shore of the island for families to explore. During the island's first two years, attendance wasn't really meeting Disney's expectations as most people classified the island as a half-day attraction. So with this, in 1976, Disney closed the island to undergo renovations. Snack bars were added along with a brand new aviary and the Treasure Island name was now changed to Disney's Discovery Island. Discovery Island was actually quite a lavish and secluded place, and as the years went on the attraction grew in its popularity and size of species. The entire island was laid out in basically one path. Essentially, once you get off the boat and onto the dock, you are in a small hub that connects everything together. Once you begin walking down the path, that will lead you around the entire island. The whole island is themed to be this tropical paradise, and it really does present that quite well. But then came a major shift to everything related to Discovery Island in the mid-90s. Disney announced they would be building a brand new theme park which took the basic theme of Discovery Island, called Disney's Animal Kingdom. This was essentially Discovery Island, just another 568 acres larger. Also, not really on an island. And when this massive zoological park opened in April of 1998, 
rumors began to be spread of the closure and demolition of Disney's Discovery Island. Since the opening of Animal Kingdom, attendance numbers for the island began to fall, and species that lived on the island began to be transferred to the new park. This was putting up some red flags until Disney finally made the announcement on March 26, 1999 that the island would close permanently on its 25th anniversary. Allegedly, Disney had been planning the closure of the island for over 9 years, and to them they were essentially building a theme park to replace Discovery Island. However, it was refreshingly nice to see how honest Disney was being about the situation when a spokesperson stated that, quote, It's a bit sad when we have to say goodbye to an old favorite, but change is just part of the process. Ah, <sighs> what a time Disney PR was. So why did the island end up closing? Well, honestly, having something that's known for being a half-day attraction, coupled with the fact that it's only accessible by boat, just brought up poor attendance numbers. The expenses to keep up an island that's not directly accessible to the mainland can't be cheap either, especially for Florida weather. Animal Kingdom was just the answer to a bigger and better Discovery Island, and the island now just had no purpose to be there. I mean, to be fair, when we lay it all out, it does kind of make sense. People have always speculated and made accusations claiming that the island closed due to a deadly bacteria that contaminated the lake, and that's just not true. So, on April 8th, 1999, Disney's Discovery Island closed forever. The only thing is, though, uh, nothing really ever happened to it. Back in March, when Disney announced that the island would close, they did state that they were looking into new ideas to repurpose the island. However, nothing really happened to the island. Disney continued to care and maintain the island up until July of 1999, when things sort of just stopped. Disney had just left the island completely abandoned. Now sometime between August and October of 2006, the main dock was removed along with some other small structures visible from the shore of the island. However, everything else in the interior of the island remained there. Just the idea behind the fact that this is a real thing is just so surreal and kind of incredible. But trust me, this gets actually a lot more creepy and interesting. So after the closure of the island in 1999 to somewhere around 2008, the lights actually remained active on the island. Every night, the perimeter of the island's lights would shine to give the illusion that the island is still active. However, the island even had power in the interior of the island, as service buildings could still be seen with their lights on. <laughs> that fact is just so creepy. Since around 2008 though, it does seem as though Disney disconnected the power to the island, or had simply deactivated its lighting systems throughout the island. Now to me, one of the most creepy things about this is just that we don't know what this actually looks like. To this day, right now, there have only been two documented explorations of the island. One of whom being Shane Perez, who explored the island to my best guess in around 2004, and the other being Nomius from Fleurbex in 2007. So it's been almost 10 years since anyone has actually documented the island. Now Shane claimed while he was on the island they did find some graffiti. I'm not really sure the validity of this statement, but honestly if it is true, it probably was just from Disney employees or some workers that were authorized to be on the island. But the complete lack of knowledge of the island just makes it that much more creepy and mysterious. Now the last picture we've ever seen on the island was all the way back in 2007 which is kind of crazy. To this day, right now, basically everything from 1999 still remains on the island, completely abandoned by Disney. Now when the island first opened, it really did kind of just stay out of the media spotlight, until some incidents began to occur on the island. In 1989, Disney was directly charged from the state of Florida and federal officials with at least 16 accounts of animal cruelty, which originated from the mysterious deaths and mistreatments of vultures on the island. Now this island had been plagued with vulture problems for years. Employees were suspected to beat the animals, isolate the birds in small sheds with limited food and water. Disney was even charged of having employees shoot at the birds. So what is happening with the island right now, and what does the future hold for it? Well, as for the island right now, not much is actually happening with it. Like I said before, Disney removed some exterior structures such as the main dock. However, honestly, that was it. All the other buildings that were visible from the water have been covered by trees and vegetation. The beached pirate ship which laid on the southwest side of the island is actually still there too. It's been heavily covered by vegetation, but you still can make out what it is. The entrance to the island itself from the main guest dock is also still there, and it's actually quite visible from the water. Just a few feet to the south 
south from that building is what I could tell a service area for the island. That dock had actually been replaced with a much newer one, and it actually still remains there to this day with some sort of utility shed on it. I think they left this here as if Disney ever needs to actually get onto the island, they have a safe place to do so. Some buildings can actually be seen from the water, but the vegetation on the island has really covered everything quite well. From the air though, it's quite of a different story. Most of the structures actually on the island can be clearly seen, along with other structures such as the bird enclosure canopies. So what's going to happen to the island? Well, when Disney first announced that the island would close back in March of 1999, the Disney spokesperson claimed that while the company wasn't announcing anything at the time, they were considering other uses for the island. Rumors suggested at the time that the island would be repurposed to incorporate honeymoon cottages. Other rumors claim that the island would be made into a treasure hunt game, which would take place in the island for families. Kind of going back to what Discovery Island was supposed to be when it was Treasure Island. Later, rumors began to be spread over Disney allegedly working with the team behind the popular game Myst, and turn the land into an interactive island based off the one in the game. However, this was never really announced, and nothing really ever happened with this. Now the island seems like a prime land to be built on, however, when I really look at it, without a doubt, this is kind of Disney's fault. But think of how long the land has been sitting there with no maintenance or care at all. Disney added small rivers to run through the island, so I can only imagine what trying to build something on that land would be like. Not to mention, I don't see any way that they could salvage what's already there. Their only option now is to just clear the land and start fresh. But honestly, I don't even know if that's financially possible. Things have changed since the 90s, obviously, and attendance is pretty incredible at the parks now. But I'm not sure Disney could find something to put on the island that would offset the costs of even building something there in the first place. It seems as though now that Disney just likes to pretend that the island doesn't exist, or at least what's on it. Just imagine how much it would actually cost to, you know, get the heavy machinery even onto the island. Since Disney actually put man-made waterways in there, and having those just sit there for so many years, I can't imagine that helps the land in any way. So I would imagine that the land isn't that safe to build anything on right now anyway. Something interesting though, when Disney's Animal Kingdom first opened in 1998, the main hub was called Safari Village. When Discovery Island closed in 1999, Animal Kingdom's main hub was actually renamed to be called Discovery Island, which is kind of like a weird unknown reference to where Animal Kingdom even came from. I kind of, it's kind of nice, I like that. So it really is unclear as to what will actually happen to Discovery Island. And I think at this point it would just be too expensive to tear down what's already on the island. So I think it's going to take a while for Disney to actually find what they want to do with the island. Just a quick update to the video, actually while I was editing this, I was sent a picture by someone on Twitter uh, of the main entrance area from the dock. Uh, and this picture was taken on August 26, 2016, and there's actually a fence now over the exposed area as to where the dock was. Uh, I have no idea why this is here or the purpose of this fence, but it really does intrigue me as to the reason why it's actually there. Uh, it does mean one thing though, and that's that people have been on the island, either Disney construction workers or some sort of employees to at least put up that fence. So this might even mean that something may be happening on the island. Maybe uh, it's for construction workers. Maybe it's a safety a safety thing that they need to put up or something. Um, but yeah, it's very bizarre as to why that's even there. But I mean, something's happening on the island. And I thought I should update you guys. For me though, this is probably the most interesting and creepy place that I've ever done. People always ask me if I were to choose any place to see for myself in person, this would be at no doubt in my mind. The fact that the Disney company has an abandoned island in the middle of the most visited resort in the world is just absolutely incredible to me. So now if you're ever in Walt Disney World and you happen to be passing by the island, take a bit of a harder look at the island, and it's pretty incredible what you may just see. Anyway guys, my name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching. From the air though, it's quite of a different story. From the air though, it's quite of a bit- Oh my god!